thought it was very interesting when one of the stylists said that nobody is natural. So if you've ever straightened your hair, if you've ever yes. colored your hair, if you've ever did anything to your hair, even if you're wearing your natural coils, at this point, you still aren't considered natural because you have altered your hair. Exactly. And you know what? That was very interesting. Yeah. I mean, it was so interesting to, to the fact that we had to bring a part two. Right. Now, I mean, it was absolutely amazing. Honestly, I mean, that whole conversation about blew my mind. I'm like, I'm, I'm natural. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Donna sitting over there on the side looking up things. I, <laughs> this, this can't be right. Oh, it was absolutely amazing. And so, um, Sarah, when it comes to natural hair, okay, and you know, what are some of the things that you value when it comes to natural hair? <clears throat> well, <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually just really um, transitioned into natural hair. Um, okay. Now, okay, the couple that we 
we actually had on that. Oh my God, it was so cute. Feeding each other strawberries oh, and whatnot. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I felt love. I'm, I'm just saying, I just felt love. You know, so now when it comes to hair and relationships, okay, how important is it, you know, for a woman to say, okay, well, you know what? I care about how my partner, um, what they think about my hair. You know, what do you think? Amanda. I think, you know, we are our own people, right? So if you want blue hair, dye your hair blue, right? But I also know that um, hair is a very serious thing, especially mm -hmm. um, in heteronormative relationships. Yes. Um, men like hair, and when you change your hair, it's like this big event. Your hair dyed, honey blonde. It's like, well, you didn't discuss that with me. But it's my hair. <laughs> it's my hair. But that's so true. And yeah. it shows up every day. The way that people expect you to be when you're in a specifically heteronormative relationship, mm -hmm. and that does include masculine women. The way okay. With feminine right. women. Okay. Because um, I'm, I'm like, my therapist offers the scene at all. But at that point, it, it gets into this space where, oh, you gonna, what you mean you cut your hair? Right. Why did you cut your social value? Oh, Why wow. did you now change the value of who you are when I'm using you as a tool to show up to my friends? Oh, right. wow. Yeah. 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 See, value's on there. And, and that is true. Okay, but you said something. Okay, so now, why then, okay, so when you say that, that, you know, women should, um, they feel like they they have to get that person's opinion, or right. like the mate, you know, is expecting for their hair to be bald. But why is that? It's because most women tend to think that men loves long hair, mm -hmm. but that's not necessarily so. So communication is key. Yeah. So all men don't like long hair. Some men like short cuts. Um, um, cut. But I think we associate being um, feminine with long hair. Okay. So I feel that. Um, when and women, yep, and Queen Bible, and you know, black folks love, love the Bible. <laughs> and um, <laughs> show me the scripture. <laughs> uh, okay. Right? Well, it's the second Corinthians. But we hold, we hold long hair to this very high, high standard. So yes. I know even um, my grandmother, I love her to death, but she always asks me when she talks to me, she asks me. How am I taking care of my hair? Okay. You haven't cut your hair, have you? The, okay. And right. She's um and she used to always tell me you need to keep your hair long so you can grow it up in a ponytail, you can go back to bay. And I feel like we just hold long hair to this high regard. But okay. I love short hair, but I think you have to be very confident to rock the short cuts. Mm. 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 Yeah. <laughs>
don't be the breadwinner in the house. So I'm just saying that in, in that instance, again, we're dealing with corporate women. And so, you know, professional women. And so it's like, okay, you know, I, I say this is what we're going to eat. I say this is how things are going to be done. I say, I say, you know, but at what point, again, when your husband is like, oh, I love that on you, and you just, and you give it to him. I think that's one thing. Like, I'm, I'm giving it to you, right? Like, <laughs> like, you like this look on me, so, you know, maybe I do take that into consideration when I go to get my hair done, but you're not with me every day. And so it's one thing for me to wear my hair the way you want me to wear my hair. And yeah, okay, I know sometimes you touch my hair like this, I'll keep it like that. But if I wear my hair some way that makes me feel confident, that makes me a better partner, right? Because I can connect to you more because I'm feeling confident within myself. Mm -hmm. Then I'm the submission piece. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Come on. Right. So I'm the submission piece. Yes. We are supposed to submit to each other. I'm not just supposed to submit yes. to you. Mm. Right? Yes. So when we talk about submission, we are talking about respecting our partners. Okay. So that means if I like to wear my hair a certain way, you should respect mm. how I would choose to wear my hair and how my hair makes me feel as a woman, how confident it makes me feel. Because submission isn't about ruling Yes, it's about us respecting each other and respecting each other's decisions and working in a partnership. That. You better say that. Ah, oh, you better say that. <laughs> okay, but you know what? Um, and you're absolutely correct. You know, and so, and, and you just shared something about the confidence and whatnot. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, but now, let's talk about the woman that is not walking in her natural confidence, right. but in or now wearing a mask. And so we have, we have, I, I have given that, that, you know, condition, that disorder, a name, dysphoria. Mm -hmm. And so when I tell you dysphoria is using hair pieces and makeup to camouflage pain, trauma, you know, or faith in oneself, resulting in a false security, mm -hmm. okay, which also um, restricts them from managing stress. And so when I tell you, then thus, then comes the anxiety. And so now, how can Dr. Donna, you know, how could we define or, you know, that woman, how would that woman know that then, okay, you know what, I have an issue. I was that woman, and so, you know, but I, I'd like to hear what would you say about that. That's a moment of true self-reflection. Yeah. Now, to sit down in yourself. When you do what you do, who are you doing it for? Yes, yes. It's not the what. I know that we, we get very caught up in the what, like what weave you wear, how are you constantly made? That's the what. I'm pushing aside. What's the why? Why are you doing it? For whom? Yeah. So if you can't, like I said, if you can't leave your house, <laughs> if you can't take out your garage, if you cannot make a quick run to the grocery store without a full beat, and I'm full. I'm here to tell you. Ladies, I'm here to tell you. I will wake up. I am telling you. I have no. I have no. Someone that she was like, no, 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 no. I cannot take out the garbage without a full face because I might eat my husband. I'm like, what husband? Are you going to meet on the way to the garbage can? He might be on the run. I'm like, meanwhile, man, sweaty, and look at you taking care of your responsibilities. That's sexy. They know what you're doing.
Somewhere along the way, they got so used to the look that when they were naked face, they didn't like what they saw. Mm -hmm. but, but you know what? Now, I believe if you sat down and individually spoke to them, it would be something that they would have gone through. It, it would have been something, you know. Um, they went into America, that's another thing. <laughs> Yeah. No, no, absolutely. I, I mean, because again, people don't understand that you know trauma can bring about these things. You know, pain, pain from relationships. You know, pain from the past. Pain. You know, so any of these issues can cause an individual to get be stuck with wearing this mask. You know, because again, we want to make it we, right here on social media. We want to make sure that everything looks tight, yeah. is tight, and appears to be tight. Right. And like when you're talking about trauma, a lot of times we think about trauma as physical trauma and not emotional. Absolutely. And think about the kid or the grown person who um, their grandmother or their mother or their father continually told them that they were ugly, right? Yeah. So they feel like or that their I, hair was nasty. Yeah, their hair was nasty. So it's like, I have to wear my wig. I have to wear my makeup every day. I mean, that's one of the things that, Dr. Donna, that we are doing you know, with this um, once a month, we have on our show, The Hair Day, and I will pull with Brain Dr. Donna on when we go through the book and we talk about that in one of the sessions that we have that I have actually with my daughter with the cocoa butter and hair grease. Because again, she has seen me cover up. And so and I have just had to come out with Dr. Donna and say, okay, Dr. Donna, then, you know, in order for me to get her to embrace her natural, do I necessarily have to come out? That was one hard question to ask. Because <laughs> you don't have my answer. <laughs> Halfway. <laughs> I did a halfway. For those so out there, there, I say yes. You have to embrace the your natural because it's them. not what you say is what you do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You, you sitting there smoking cigarette after cigarette after cigarette, telling your kid don't smoke. Why not? You do. Right. Right. So they follow what we do more than what we say. Absolutely. People will tell them things all day, but they're watching what people are actually right. doing, and they are repeating that. They're not repeating what you say. Absolutely. So when I tell you, I am truly excited in what we are talking about with season three. You know, um, I am just truly excited about the women that we are going to, you know, touch with season three and the seasons to come forward. I thank you so much, Sarah Busby, for being a thank guest you. on our thank show. You. And I absolutely, and the panel, my beautiful ladies, right here. Amanda Nicholson and Dr. Donna Oliver. Thank you so much. Again, my name is Morello Kane. Okay, Morello Kane, this is the Hair Debate, the platform.